Uh, hello, and welcome to another Race 3D live stream. This time, I'm going to be talking about the E2, all of the hardware specs and features of the E2. Going over the touchscreen first. It does use a similar display to the Pro 2. It's just a, a horizontal view instead. This same menu is broken down into four submenus. So home screen will show the preview of the model, display the name of the model, the estimated time remaining, height and specific layer that's running, and the percentage of how much it's already completed. From this screen, I can also again set the temperatures for both nozzles and the heated bed if I need to preheat for any reason. Tune screen has those same three heating options as well as the feed rate or controlling the overall print speed, fan speeds for cooling, and then left and right nozzle flow rates can be adjusted individually. Uh, the utilities is where it starts to differ from the Pro Series. The E2's utility screen is broken down into another subset of three menus here. So the top one is for primarily moving all the axes. If you are going to jog any of the axes, it's all selected up at the top. So I can move the individual left print head, uh, jog the right print head, Y and Z. And then there's a separate tab for filament loading. So in this configuration, then I can go ahead and uh, either select or add in specific filament profiles. Once these profiles are changed, that is going to adjust the temperature here. So if I'm going from you know ABS to PLA, it should switch for the profile. Or I can, of course, just press that temperature again, make that adjustment for the value, and then hit load and start the load sequence. A uh, new tab for leveling. The E2s do have automatic bed leveling with a touch probe on the left print head. So I can run a leveling sequence at any time from the utility screen. I can either run a 9x7 leveling grid, that's 63 points total here, or do a simple level, which is going to be a 3x3 grid for the 9 points. After it completes that bed leveling, it actually uh, displays the mesh information on the screen itself and gives me a specific value for this bed's flatness. So if we ever did want to come back in and make any adjustments to get a more level bed, I can go ahead and use this as reference uh, and then make adjustments to the surface itself, and I'll show those points in a second. That's it for uh, the manual leveling via utilities. And then lastly, the print screen. So this does work pretty much the same as the Pro 2. Uh, you have the USB access and uh, the local storage. So I can either run G codes off a USB drive that would plug into the top up here, or connect the machine to a local network via Ethernet or wireless, push G codes directly to the display itself, and then I can pull them off of local storage. There is uh, a couple other features for the E2 related to the screen and the internal lights. This button on the side, if I go ahead and tap that, it puts the machine into sleep mode. So the screen goes to sleep, lights inside turn off. Uh, it can still continue printing when it's in sleep mode, and then it just waits to be interacted with again, and then it just pops back up. So really, really nice uh, with everything being fully enclosed, keeps it quieter, and then just having the ability to turn those lights off. So if I go ahead and open the front door, this lets me get access to the flexible bed. One thing I do want to note with the uh, door assemblies and the upper door section in the lid as well, is that the E2 does have a automatic uh, pause function for if the doors are ever opened. So if I enable that in the settings on the touchscreen, then anytime I open a door, it will immediately go into a, uh, a pause function. Then when I close it back, it just goes back and resumes and starts the print again. So I go ahead and remove the bed. It is a flex plate. And then we are still running the uh, standard race 3D polycarbonate blend build surface on top of that. And then all of this in here is secured in with a of magnets. And then these four corners uh, and the center point can be adjusted if I want to try and uh, tweak the leveling or do anything else to that. I would then go ahead and use the uh, leveling function of the touchscreen, reconfirm, check my flatness, and go back and make adjustments from here. But it can all be done with the machine's uh, internal functions. And then a couple other things on the E2 does have a whole array of uh, functions and instructions that are built into the display. If I go into the main settings under the, I can then go into our offset calibration and I can do this at any time. Uh, when I go ahead and tell it what nozzles we're running, start this, confirm we are running our race 3 PLA. And then that gets me into the menu where I can run the test functions for calibrating the left and right probe, running bed leveling, checking the offsets, and then running a final dual color calibration process. So this is all pre-built into the E2. I don't need to consult any external manuals or reference back and forth when I'm calibrating. It'll all pro uh, it'll present all of it on the screen and then run through it on its own. So inside the E2, I'm looking at it from above. I just went ahead and opened up the uh, top lid. 
Uh, these two chambers here are going to be your filament uh, chambers in, in the upper section here, right before it gets to the feed tube. Uh, it does also have a optical filament runout sensor similar to the Pro Series. That's going to work roughly the same. Uh, but the big thing that we want to look at is the IDEX system, the independent dual extruder print heads. These allow the E2 to run prints in duplication and mirror mode, something that the Pro 2 is not capable of doing, uh, by running the bed, of course, in the same direction, and then either copying the same exact movements to give you two duplicate parts, or mirroring the movements of the print heads to give you two mirrored parts. If you're doing, say, a left and a right insole, or a left and right hand things, whatever you want to need to be symmetrical, um, it would be able to just knock out two of those parts in the time that it takes to print one part. So it is really, really convenient. Um, another thing is that the E2 print heads are a completely different design from the Pro 2s. Uh, it does work with a idle bearing on one side and then a main drive gear internally. So we can go ahead and open up that extruder side door. Probably get a better view of those feed gears. I'm gonna go ahead and just loosen this screw at the top that holds the lever arm in. Be careful not to lose that spring and that drops down. Now I have access to the internal feed gears and then that's our idle bearing. Now the E2 does do uh, better with uh, softer materials and flexible filaments uh, because of this short print path and the different feed system. So if you did want to kind of specialize in running flexible materials, uh, the E2 is definitely a really good choice for running things like TPU and TPE. Uh, another thing is working on the main print head assembly. Uh, this comes off very, very easily. If I go ahead and turn the machine off here, so I can go ahead and work with some of the electronics. If I go ahead and undo the feed tube at the top, then all that I need to do to remove the entire print head is go ahead and loosen these two bolts in the back. And then with those removed, the only thing left to disconnect is our main cable. Those two come off, it's back mounting, and I can take the entire print head off of the rail frame, and then just disconnect this clip and unplug our cable. That is the entire uh, E2 print head on its own. Now, uh, with the print head off, it's actually easier for me to show how the hot end assemblies work. This one does have a bit of a different uh, system for securing it into the print head than the Pro 2s do. Uh, the entire hot end assembly is going to be just this little unit here. This entire section has a throat tube that seats up into uh, this heat sink block. So this entire portion in here is all the heat sink. Uh, all I need to do is loosen that hex scrub screw, then the throat tube slides out, and then there's just a set of cables that run up and back into the board up here. So if I take that bolt off and remove the cover, then I can disconnect those cables and I'll have just the entire a hot end assembly with the heater rod and thermocoupler attached, and then I can work with it from there. But everything's really, really easy to take off in sections, uh, nice and easy to work with kind of outside the machine or in the machine. Uh, and it's just kind of, I really do like working on the E-Series um, because it's so easy to be able to, you know, take parts in and out. Another thing that is really, really nice about having the IDEX system is dealing with uh, the oozing for dual color prints. Uh, it, the E2 will still use the same uh, kind of wipe wall and wipe tower in Idea Maker, but because it's not constantly moving that other uh, secondary nozzle over the part, any ooze that does happen is going to be off into the side uh, where this printhead is parked over, and then they of course will park the other one, switch their positions, come back in, and then do that printing uh, as well. So it has a easier time dealing with ooze because it's not constantly moving it over the printhead. Other things to mention is that the E2 does also have a HEPA filter similar to the Pro 2. So if you were going to still be running ABS or anything else that needed to be filtered out, uh, the E2 would be able to handle that as well. And then uh, loading in the filament for the filament boxes here. Those just open up. These sit in those rollers down there and they just feed up directly into the feed tubes. Um, they do have some slight differences, so you would not be able to put a left print head in the right position. For the automatic bed leveling, the left print head does have a touch probe mounted on the side, so you would need to have a left print head in the left side. Um, they are going to be pretty similar in all the rest of the construction, just mirrored. So these front casings, the fans, they use the same nozzle, the same hot ends. Um, but for the entire print head assembly itself, uh, you would need to have a left dedicated uh, left model and then a right model.
Uh, I'll go ahead and start off with uh, talking about the nozzles. Um, so if you are going to do a nozzle replacement and you don't want to do kind of a hot end swap or do uh, all the maintenance for the print head, um, what you would still do is go through and remove the nozzle itself. I recommend removing it from the machine. Um, so you would loosen that side screw, drop the throat tube down, disconnect the back, and then uh, just holding the heat block using an eight millimeter socket, I believe, uh, loosen that off and then tighten it back down with the other nozzle. You do still want to keep in mind um, the nozzle gap similar to the Pro 2 series. Um, and then if it is uh, harder to secure and keep a hold on that throat tube, keeping that in line, I will sometimes put it back into the print head and then do a final tightening of the nozzle, um, holding the block just with, the, the, with it in the print head. That way you can still have better control over the actual position of the throat tube. Uh, the E2 does have different settings in Idea Maker for PVA. If you look at that drop down menu for materials, uh, there is a PVA setting for just Race 3D PVA, that's for the pros, and then there's Race 3D PVA E2. Um, so it does run different settings, but overall the performance is going to be pretty similar uh, and the results still just as good. Um, there is, I believe, kind of a, a quality improvement. They changed the info pattern from grid to gyroid. Uh, so if you did want to change that on the Pro Series as well, all you need to do is click the gear icon uh, when you have PVA selected. That opens up the filament settings. You have access to the overrides on the left. And then from there, you can change the uh, infill for PVA to be pretty much any other pattern you want. Um, but I do recommend gyroid because it's open all the way through so you can actually get water into all of the supports at once. Uh, and levels all a bit faster that way. Uh, so it's it sounds like when the uh, when the E2 finishes a print, all of the motors are still in an engaged state. They're just basically sitting idle, and there's nothing wrong with them being like that. Um, if you did want to fully disable the motors, um, so that way they're basically loose and fully disengaged the entire time, uh, then you would just go to the utility screen, and then under Move Axes, this button on the right. Uh, it's got the motor icon with an X over it. This is actually a button. It's not a status indicator. The X symbol will always be there. This is true for the E's and the Pro's. Uh, but if we go ahead and hit that symbol, then it just says the motors have been disabled. So that basically allows me to fully move both print heads and slide the bed back and forth without any resistance. That's going to do it for our stream today. Uh, thank you very much again for joining us. And uh, we're definitely going to have some more stuff coming up for the coming weeks. Uh, so stay tuned for those. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone again.